What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats. Today, I am so pumped to welcome on the number one prospect in baseball for the Baltimore Orioles, Jackson Holiday. Jackson Holiday is 19 years old and has shot up through the minor leagues this year. A ball through Triple A. He's currently in Triple A for the Norfolk Tides, and uh, he has just raked at every single level he's been at, and a lot of hype around this guy. He's going to be very, very good for a very long time, and I'm excited to watch him in the big leagues, and I've been excited to watch him this year in the minor leagues. But uh, we're going to talk all about that journey so far and the transition from high school and to pro ball and now to Triple A. Uh, there was also a story that went pretty viral a couple weeks ago when he got called up to AAA and uh, they wouldn't give him a hotel room because he was too young. So asking him how all that came about and uh, asking him about his father, Matt Holiday, and some Matt Holiday trivia, seeing how much he knows there. Uh, all about this Orioles team and the Orioles organization. This is a really, really fun conversation. I'm pumped for everybody to listen to it. He's an awesome human being, great baseball player. So let's welcome him in now. Without further ado, number one prospect in baseball, Jackson Holliday. Fly ball onto the track at the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field and gone. What a game. What a moment. All right, I'm pumped to welcome him in now. The number one prospect in baseball for the Baltimore Orioles, Jackson Holiday. Jackson, first off, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I want to go back to just over a year ago. The draft last year in June, you went first overall. And there, there were a lot of comparisons to you and Drew Jones, who's the son of Andrew Jones, the Atlanta Braves, great. And he ended up going number two. You went number one. What point, at what point did you know that you were going to be the number one pick? Were you tipped off ahead of time or was it like in that moment you figured it out? It was actually not, not really until that moment. Um <laughs> which was kind of crazy to, to think about. Um, I heard that, you'll know, like the day before or, or leading up to it, but, but I had no idea. So uh, my dad got, got the call from my agent, uh, Scott, and um, just right before, and he didn't really tell me. And uh, that, was the, that was the moment that I found out was uh, the same moment that, that everyone else did. So it was, it was really, really cool to, to be able to share that with my family, and uh, it's crazy what's, what's happened in a year. What was draft day like for you? Was it take take me through draft day? Your family's there, everybody's there with you. Take me through your draft day experience. It was pretty crazy. Um, the day before, actually, we were in St. Louis for uh, I think it was for like family Christian day and and uh, in the Cardinal Stadium. So uh, it was it was a crazy uh, crazy turnaround. We flew home and and that day was the was the draft. So uh, um, a lot happened, um, but it was it was a lot of fun to have a lot of. A lot of people over at the house and um yeah it was it was a crazy day you were originally committed to oklahoma state where your uncle is the coach there how did he handle the news that you you officially weren't coming there i think pretty well he was uh, he was pretty proud they were there at the house they live about uh like 500 yards from us so it's it's a it's a really a uh, close community in, uh, in stillwater uh, my grandparents are right down the road as well so uh, he was uh, he was pretty excited um but yeah, uh, I wish I could have gone there, but uh, yeah. I'm very glad that that I'm here now. Yeah, I, I think you made the right choice. Uh, you know, I mentioned the the similarities with you and and Drew Jones. Obviously, his dad being Andrew Jones, longtime great for the Braves. Your dad being Matt Holiday, as you mentioned uh, there, and, and got the call and was able to to tell you and be there with you. How do how do you think your dad has helped you in your career get to the point where you are right now? Yeah, growing up in, in the clubhouse was was really neat. Um, I was I was around for pretty much the his whole career, which is kind of cool to to think about. Um, his last year, I was thirteen years old, so uh, pretty much the the whole time I was able to to be with him. And uh, me and my brother grew up in the clubhouse and, and going to the field early every day and, and shagging BP and being able to go to to a bunch of really awesome stadiums and, and be around guys like. Nolan Arenado and and um, yeah. being able to see what he does off on the field was was really neat for me and uh, I got to spend some time with Cody Bellinger last offseason um, hit with him a little bit and he's having a, 
an awesome year this year, which is really cool to see, uh, just being able to to talk to him and, and see how much uh, he loves baseball. That's all he wanted to talk about what was baseball, and that was cool for, for me to see. And uh, it's definitely helped me with this year. Um, being able to handle myself on and off the field and in the clubhouse has um, made it really easy for me just being able to grow up in the clubhouse. Do you have a favorite moment from your dad's career? Um, I really enjoyed all the all-star games. Um, that was probably my favorite, just being able to to be around all, all, the, all the best players in the league and be able to go out there and, and shy VP and, and spend time with them. And, and uh, You're out there on the, the home run derby, you down there on the field? <laughs> I was on the field. Oh, yeah, That's on the cool. field with the home run derby and uh, wishing I was out there shagging, but we weren't allowed to. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, being, uh, being on the sideline uh, – Watching him, I think he did maybe two or three of them. So uh, it was really, really fun. All right, some final questions about your dad first. We're going to call this Asking Jackson Holiday About Matt Holiday. Um, how many career home runs did your dad have? Okay. Uh, is it 317? It's 316. 316? That's, that's pretty good. I'll take that. What was his career batting average? Oh, 299. That was uh, that's tough, yeah. man. <laughs> I was just, just telling, yeah, just one knock away. That. Yeah. Um, he was drafted in what round in 1998? Fifth, seventh, seventh. Nah, gave him some credit. All right, this is a tough one. Your last one. Your dad wore four different numbers in the big leagues. Can you name them all? I think so. Five, fifteen, seven, and seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nailed it. Uh, if you weren't able to to answer your dad, if you're not ever, if he's not the answer here, who was your favorite player growing up? Um, it kind of changed. Uh, like Tulo, kind of growing up, whenever he was with the Cardinals, I mean with the Rockies, sorry, and then uh, Nolan Arenado, and then I like Trey Turner a lot right now. Um, now that I'm in pro ball, it's kind of someone that that I want to play like. Um kind of impacts the game in, in lots of different ways. Um, you have the wheels like Trey Turner? I'm trying. I'm getting trying to get stronger <laughs> and faster, but uh, hopefully one day. Hopefully one day. But uh, I, I really just enjoy watching players and tearing, taking bits and pieces of, uh, of lots of guys' different games. You've, you've shot up through the minor leagues since you've gotten drafted, and you're in AAA now in, in Norfolk, which sweet spot in my heart, went to Old Dominion. So shout out Norfolk, Virginia. But w w now you're you're right on the cusp of the big leagues. What would you say personally, if you're thinking about yourself and how quickly your journey has gotten to where it is, what is something that you would say needs to improve in your game? If you're looking internally, what would you say is the thing that needs to improve the most? Yeah, um, I'm someone who likes to, to improve every bit uh, of my game at, at a time is what I try to do. But uh yeah, I, I definitely need to get stronger um, playing against a lot of these guys now that are a whole lot older than me and all have big league time. It's it's kind of crazy. I always look up on the scoreboard and they have like when they debuted and, and, and when they were born. It's the kind of the two things that that I look at. And so I, I definitely think I need to get stronger um, to be able to impact the game and in different ways. Um, I feel like whenever I whenever I do get stronger, I get faster and um, everything kind of ticks up a bit. So I'm looking forward to this offseason to to be able to go home and, and train and, and come back for, for spring training next year and uh, hopefully weigh a little bit more and, and run a little bit faster and hit the ball a little bit harder and, and farther. So I think that's the, the main thing. Um, obviously, I want to be a really good defender, and um, that's another thing that, that I need to work on as well. The You've you've hit at every level you've been at. Start of the year at A ball, then high A, double A, triple A now. Where, have the Orioles – were they communicative with you as you were moving so quickly of, hey, you're not going to be in the big leagues this year, or you are just one way or another communicating with you to, to put your mind at ease and just let you know to go out and play? Um, Honestly, not really. I mean, a little bit like here and there, like, hey, you need to start training for, for double A whenever I was in high A, and I was like, okay, what do I, what do I need to do? And so they're like, Here's what some of the guys were, were exposed to a little bit in, in double A. And here's how we're going to try to try to prevent that. So a little bit. Um, I was honestly surprised when I got called up to to triple A. Um, I was very excited, but I was also a little surprised. So um, just stuff like that. But uh, they've done a great job of, of helping me um, succeed and guys that have similar swings to me. Um, 
like Kowser and, and Heston and what they struggled at a little bit to help me um, kind of get away from that. Um, and different levels, they they learned to develop different pitches. So uh, just being able to adjust to that a little quickly or quicker um, has been very helpful. Just uh, in, I as a guy that was a lifelonger in, in high A, that's where I maxed out. And you're talking about the jump here, getting ready to go up to double A. What – what where what were the organization's tips on what you need to work on before you make the jump up to double A? Yeah, um, I I don't struggle, but changeups are kind of the the thing that that gets me every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. I'll chase them a little bit and get myself out. So really hammering uh like different speeds and and um, and BP and and in darts um, has something that they emphasize and um, just two speed or three speed like BP and darts um, was helpful to be able to just adjust change ups and, um, and stuff like that. But now that I'm here, um, I feel like I've done a good job of controlling the zone and, and swinging at strikes. I just keep hitting it right at people. So uh, just little things here and there um, have been very helpful. How hard was the, if somebody were to ask me the biggest transition in, in my baseball life, I would tell them from college, to the pros, you know, in college, you go from facing guys throwing 90 with really sliders aren't a thing. It was more like fastball, curveball in college, fastball, curveball, change up. And then in, in pro ball, you got guys throwing 92 mile an hour sliders and things change immediately. And I was always wondering when I would play high school guys or play with high school guys out of the draft, how, how difficult was that transition for you? I mean, in high school, guys are throwing 80s tops mo uh, many of them and and don't have near what you see in pro ball and one year removed you're having success at every level you hit in the in professional baseball how difficult or how easy was a trans how, was the transition for you yeah it was I would say it was kind of difficult um I didn't have a great summer leading up to my senior year in high school I kind of struggled to be honest and uh but being able to go out there and, and face quality arms a lot of them are in the minor leagues right now which is which yeah. is pretty cool to see um but uh once I got to to camp after I got drafted uh we faced a lot of the machine and and did some different things to kind of help uh, my eyes adjust um hit these foam balls uh feel like they're coming at you at 150 um but uh just really challenging myself um off the field and in practice has been very helpful for me and then whenever I got to to low A last year, um, being able to control the zone and, and not swing at balls. And uh, whenever I do get into hitters counts, being able to capitalize was was very helpful. How I, I need to hear the story of when you get called up to triple A. Uh, story went kind of viral that you when you got to the hotel, you weren't allowed to have a room or they didn't give you a room. Tell me, tell me the hotel story when you first got called up to triple A. Yeah, so me and my me and my fiance drove from from Bowie in the morning and um we got to, to one of the hotels and uh it wasn't it wasn't great it wasn't wasn't really too safe so uh we uh went online and, and found a found a pretty cool hotel and um yeah we went to check in we had everything uh situated and they're like can we see your ID and I'm like sure and they're like you you can't check in if you're not or you can check in but you can't like get a room unless you're 21 so you can you can buy a room if you're not 21, but you can't check in or something like that. What? So, yeah, it makes sense. So the guy was like, well, you're not old enough. And I'm like, well, can my mom check us in? Like, what do you got? And he's like, well, is your mom close? I'm like, well, she's in Oklahoma. So not not really. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, what's you guys' situation? I'm like, well, I just got called up to, to play baseball. I'm with the Orioles. And he's like, all right, here, here's the room. So it was it was a uh, it was pretty funny um kind of a kind of a really long day but uh we're here now and we're in an apartment and uh, virginia beach and it's it's all as well it's really nice so just to clarify you can buy the room you can pay for the room mm -hmm. you just can't check into the room yeah it makes sense doesn't it so <laughs> it's all right they were they were very very nice and um they hooked us up so it was great what about uh for you the pressure that comes along with being the number one prospect in baseball and number one draft pick. And um, Orioles are obviously very good right now. And there's still a lot of excitement about you and uh, your debut when it ever does come. 
Is the pressure something that comes along with that for you? Do you feel it? Do you know how to deal with it? Uh, how have you been dealing with pressure of all that? Yeah, I feel like I've, I've done a pretty good job of just going out there and, and playing baseball. Um, one of my, one of our buddies back home, just pressure is a privilege. Um, that's what he told me. He was a national champion a wrestler, Sam Zach. If he ever watches this, he'll probably be happy that, that I told you that, but uh yeah, just kind of going at it as pressure is a privilege. Um, if you have pressure, you must be doing doing something right. So uh, that's kind of how I've gone about it. Um, luckily, I'm in an organization with a bunch of really talented guys and a lot of guys that, that I get along with. So it just it makes it fun to be able to come out here and, and play. And um, I remember during spring training, I was in the locker room just looking around. I'm like, wow, that guy was the second overall pick. That guy was the fourth overall pick. So at the end of the day, you're just you're just guys coming out here playing baseball. And um, once you're on the field, that kind of all goes away. And uh, our goal is to, to be in the big leagues and not to be the to know not to be the number one prospect. At the end of the day, I'm trying to 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 make it up to the big leagues as, as fast as possible and help the Orioles win championships and uh, all the cool awards and stuff like that is, is just part of it. You mentioned how talented people around you are, how talented guys in the big leagues are. How awesome is it that when the call does finally come for you, that you're going to be on a team that is going to be really good for a long, long time to come? Yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, I guess, like I said, like growing up in baseball and um, my dad being with the Cardinals, they're in, in the postseason every single year. And that's kind of all I know is is postseason baseball and and, and good teams. So I'm, I'm excited to, to be a part of such a, such a great organization with a bunch of awesome talent and, and really great guys. So uh, being able to, to, to go to big league spring training last year and, and, and be around uh, Adley and, and Gunner and, and just seeing what, what they do off the field and um, how great of people that they are. And uh, it makes me even more excited to, to be able to join the big league club club whenever. And um, I'm very excited. A lot of a lot of great talent there now. Adley and Gunner, you mentioned, had both of them on the show at one point this year, and, and you know, legends in the organization as well. Cal Ripken Jr. had him on a couple months ago, and shortstop from the area, drafted high, ends up being the shortstop there for a long, long time to come. Do you have a relationship with Cal Ripken Jr. at all? Have you ever communicated with him? I've never met him. No, um, he threw out the it's first pitch. And, I know it's got to happen, right? Um, he threw out the first pitch in, in Aberdeen, but uh, I think it was Veterans Night or, or something like that. So he was he was pretty busy, but uh, it was um, it's really really cool to to be able to be in the same organization as him and, and play the same position. Uh, he was an awesome player, and uh, what he did uh, playing so many games in a row is is really crazy to think about. I would have thought for sure. I mean, he owns that team in Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. He's throwing out the first pitch. It just seemed like a match. It just seemed like a connection that needed that. Maybe I would have. We had a, I think, I think we had like an hour and a half rain delay before the game. So uh, our time got pushed back. So he was probably ready to leave at that point. Yeah. Have you, have you modeled your swing after anyone in particular? Um, Not really, to be honest. Um, it's just kind of how it, how it fell into place. But uh, I mean, I like, I really like Bubba Shett's swing. Um, I like his approach, being able to kind of hit the ball over the field. Um, I modeled my swing a little bit after him in, in high school, um, kind of with the no stride with two strikes. I did that quite a bit, um, but not really. Um, I like guys like Corey Seager, who's a left-handed hitting, hitting shortstop, yeah. and he's having an incredible year that I don't really feel like people are, are talking about enough, but uh, – not, not really. Um, I like Christian Yelich. Kind of watched him a little bit, um, but it's just kind of how it fell in the place. Just pick up yeah. my leg and try to make it as simple as possible. Do you? W will you sit down and and analyze video? Are you a big video guy? Will you watch video of yourself? Will you watch video of, of other guys around the league? Um. Yeah. <laughs> like two weeks ago, we have this app that you can watch everyone swing, and I didn't know about it until like two weeks ago. So I was just sitting in the hotel room and my roommate, Judd Fabian was like, Hey, you can watch your swing on here if you want. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and so I went through there and, uh, watched some of my swings from the year. And, uh, I like to, I like to look at positive things. So whenever I'm going good, 
to be able to to look at that and uh, went back on there to see how hard my dad was hitting the ball um because they had some old videos of him on there um with the eggs of Velo and stuff I thought that that stuff's always interesting to me so uh, I had some fun with that what about your bat flip bat flip game you have to practice your your bat flip game is elite I feel like it's been practiced at some point um i hit a lot of homers in in high school so <laughs> yeah you did i had I had some practice there um fortunately playing in aberdeen and uh in some of these away parks that have uh have cost me a few times where i thought i hit a homer and it hit the wall so uh, <laughs> i've kind of gotten away from it um a little bit because uh i don't hit a ton of homers i hit it right next to the wall so uh, um but yeah i hit i hit quite a few homers in high school that i knew were we're going to be homers. So uh, I had a little bit of practice there. Your uh, off season goal of getting bigger and stronger and faster will help. Yeah, uh, hopefully help hopefully, that out yeah. a little bit. But Jackson, what are, what, what would you say your goals are? Uh, you've hit at every level you've been at and that's pretty much every level this season, a ball through up through triple a. Now, what goals do you have left for this season? Yeah. Um, I've got nine triples right now. So I'm trying to get to 10 triples, um, 30 doubles. Uh, I don't know. I've got one more hit to 150 hits, I think. So just it's just some small things. Um, I know we're going to make the playoffs, so that would be cool to, to win the AAA, I guess, World Series. I don't, I don't even know what it's called. So uh, that would that would be cool. Um, but, yeah, just keep playing good, um, helping the team win. That's what's most important, um, going out there and, and scoring runs and, and um, playing good defense is, is always important. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to hit one more triple. I think 10 triples would be pretty cool. What about beyond this year? You seem goal-oriented. Do you have goals for yourself throughout your career? Yeah. Um, I think coming up in high school, um, I won two gold gloves in high school. I don't – that doesn't really count, but it's, it's kind of cool. They actually gave me, like, a real a real gold glove from Rollins. So, uh, I'd like to win a gold glove in, in the big leagues. Um um, I like to win a batting title. I think my dad, uh, my dad won one. So that would be, that would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just, um, I want to have a great career. That's the goal to be able to help the Orioles win and win world series and, um, and have a long, long career would be pretty neat. A couple fun questions for you. Family oriented questions. First one, did your dad touch home plate in game one sixty three? You know, I don't know. Um, called him safe, so I think that's all that, that matters. Uh, every single time I, I go on Twitter or something and he's in a picture, it's he didn't touch on plate. So I think the Padres, they need to, they need to have a great season so people will, will forget about that. So uh, that's, that's a, it's a pretty funny topic. And honestly, I get asked a lot about it, but uh, I really have no idea if he touched on plate. I was only like four years old, so <laughs> – uh, who's the better shortstop, you or your brother, Ethan? Um, I'm going to say me right now, but uh, I think he'll probably end up at third base. He's way taller than me. He's like 6'4", and every time I see him, I feel like he gets taller. So uh, he's probably a better third baseman than I am, without a doubt, but uh, I'll take the shortstop on that one. Uh, I know there's some really good players in the in the Orioles organization, including a guy that's going to be on the left side of the infield for a long time, but – Putting that aside, I mean, what a dream, a dream left side of the infield, you and your brother at some point in your career. How awesome would that be? That would be really cool to be able to to play with him again. Um, we got to play with each other in high school. Um, he was the third baseman. I was a shortstop and I hit second. He hit third. And uh, it was really, really cool. Probably one of my one of my favorite baseball memories, with, without a doubt. Um, we went back to back twice. So that was that was really neat as well. Um, I think he's I mean, shoot, he hit. He's already got more home runs in his high school career than I do. So uh, he's he's really good. Jackson, thanks so much for joining me, man. Big fan of yours. Uh, good luck the rest of the way this year. Uh, I'll be locked in on the the box score. I need I need a triple out of you now. All right? Yeah, I know. Look for it. Hopefully, hopefully tonight. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks again to Jackson for joining me. What a really fun conversation. A great dude. He's got a big fan in me for, for the rest of his career. 19 years old. And uh, clearly the work ethic is there. The drive to be the best is there. And uh, it's just a, a really awesome conversation with him. And uh, yeah, just hearing about his transition and uh, what he had to improve on. I, I always love getting 
a little deeper into swing thoughts and hearing what he needed to improve on from high A to double A and uh, what he wants to work on in the off season, what he needs to improve in, in his mind. And man, his goals of gold gloves, batting title, winning it, that guy's going to be successful for a long, long time to come. So if you didn't know the name, 19 year old Jackson holiday, number one prospect in baseball, he's going to be a stud and he is going to be in the big leagues very, very soon. So be on the lookout for him, but I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever. We're also on all social media, including YouTube at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. But that does it for this episode. Until next time, my friends, 